Hello, 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 and welcome to another video. Hope you guys are doing well. So today I wanted to show you guys a little project idea that I had yesterday. I actually recorded a video like an hour long. <laughs> um, and I was like, it was like three in the morning. I was really tired, to be honest. And I don't even remember actually recording the video. <laughs> and I watched some of it back and I was going to upload it. But then I was like, you know what? Let me just redo this video because half of it was kind of me like mindlessly just like coding and like falling asleep, literally. Um, so yeah, I had to redo this video for you guys. But basically, um, right now we're just in the early stages. I'm coding, you know, everything using Rust, a standard library. I'm making a uh, Jamal's Linux toolbox, right? So JLT. Um, too bad it couldn't be JIT. That'd be a little cooler, but you know, Linux toolbox. Um, you know, and Chris Titus is has you know I think the most popular Linux utility. Oh no, sorry, like Windows script or something in the world. Because I'm I think I saw in one of his videos he said that GitHub had it in like the tops, you know, the homepage or something. It was it was something like that. But anyways, um. It's something similar to that for, for Linux, but like super basic and no GUI. It's all terminal because, you know, I um don't have that experience yet. Although, meh, I don't know. It, I don't want to make it that complicated. Anyways, though, I'm going to show you guys uh, how it works so far and just some of the code and walk you guys through it a little bit. Um, This is just kind of like the introduction video. I'll give you guys updates as I go along in this project. And uh, yeah, so... What are the problems I'm trying to solve? Why am I even making this? Um, well, I like nuking my Linux distro every now and then. You know, if I if if I just wake up tomorrow and like, you know what, I want to use Ubuntu because why not, right? I would love to just be able to nuke my system and literally have like something I can you know type in, uh, you know, when get some URL. You know, and then it runs my script and then I can run, um, you know, full setup or something like that kind of command. And it would literally set up every, it would install every app that I use on my system daily, set up my, you know, fish terminal exactly how I want it. Like all that would be super easy and just install common apps if I wanted it to. Um, and basically things like, let me go here, let me go to my... Uh, my utilities, my Unix utilities, like these are common things that I kind of place here. Um, you know, most of the thing like files that I use a lot are not here though, because I just forget to, you know, copy them when I nuke my system, which is not, I'm not always mad at because it does kind of, you know, give me the ability to reset up my system again, which is always kind of fun. But things like Docker, right? I have like Docker scripts for Arch that. I use to, um, you know, install Docker and Docker Desktop, which actually there was an alternative to Docker Desktop that I have to look at after this video. Um, but yeah, things like this, like this is fine to run, but it'd be way easier if I could just go in the terminal and run, you know, JLT um, install Docker, right? And it literally just runs this code that I wrote, this shell code, right? Because it, it's it's it, you don't have to install anything because it's literally just using the Linux system, but it just automates this stuff. So that's kind of the goal, right? Um, it's not complicated, but it just makes things super simple for me. And you know, once you kind of deal with the programming language, you can make it really cool. Where like, you know, imagine if I um, oops. <laughs> Someone's calling me. Um, yeah, but imagine if I wanted to extend this, you know, and have some kind of feature where, like, it saves things to my file system or modifies stuff. That's just way easier to do with the programming language than using, um, you know, your system. So, yeah, let's, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the code now. Let me, let me pull that up. Um, let me go find that real quick. All right, guys, so I have the code open and I also took the call. Um, I just didn't want any interruptions anymore until I finished the video. But um, yeah, so this is the Rust file. Um, okay, real quick. Originally, I tried to do this all in Bash because it sounded fun. And then I realized that Bash doesn't have modules. Like, you know, you can have multiple files and stuff. So then I started importing commands using like source, like the Linux command to like load a file, which worked until I tried to make like a lib.sh file, which 
would like load all the sources so that way it, you know i made sure that all the uh functions in the library were available to whatever script wanted to use my library or not really library but it was really just like a bunch of utility functions i wrote and by a bunch i mean like four <laughs> um and this was all like in the span of like 20 minutes of me trying to like figure out what i wanted to do with this project and it was also like yet yeah, last night when it was 2 a.m or 3 a.m which um so yeah i didn't get that far but the point is i realized how much of a pain and i just wanted a programming language so i picked rust because i like rust and i know it better than c so you know nothing against c really um Although I might write something in C just to learn it because I like learning stuff and, um, you know, it's fun to use. But I'll just walk you guys through the code. So there's no dependencies in this project. I don't really want to add any. Um, I know Clap exists. Um, you know, I know there's a lot of great tools in the, the Linux, uh, I mean, sorry, Rust ecosystem for like dealing with CLI and terminal stuff. And, you know, there's like a bunch of GUI stuff and I could do some crazy stuff, right? But to be honest, I like to keep my code simple at first, and um, really, I find it really easy to understand. Like, yes, it's verbose. Like, I could make this a lot prettier really easily with Clap, but it's also like, you know, I know exactly what my code does, right? Like, we're grabbing the arguments. Um, if there's no arguments at all, then we're just gonna like if there's less than two arguments, we know there was no command um, input at all, right? Because um, the first the first argument, since this uses like the system environment um, arguments, then the first argument is the executable, and the second is um, the name of the command we want to run. So that's why if we if we're that's why if the length is less than two, then we know there's no command provided. Um, and so yeah, we get the command, which is the second argument, and then the rest in, and then we can also pass uh, any arguments we want to whatever command we want to run, and that's why it's just saved in a vector of strings, which you guys can see right here. Um, and yeah, then we just match over the command list, and the command list is, well, I guess you guys can see from the IntelliSense, but it's basically a static constant that I created and will never change when you run the script um i kind of had the idea of like make it some kind of virgin virgin <laughs> versioning system with the script like maybe just having like literally like a virgin dot you know t txt file which just has whatever latest version of my script you know when it when it's obviously it's more stable and when it like when the script loads up um or no when you install the script uh, I guess not install because install would always be latest but when you update the script like I would have an update command it fetches and checks your version against the other one and then it'll like pull from github and you know run some update stuff and that that's kind of one idea but um but yeah the, the command list is not going to change and I'll go to that which as you guys can see command state it has the name of the command the description some you know argument parameters and then a help uh then a handler so the reason I named, well, yeah, so that's what this does. I'll go back to that real quick. Um, just real quick, just to finish off this file. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, we iterate through all the commands. We find the command that matches, you know, this argument, um, you know, just by its name, right? And if it doesn't exist, we just say error command not found. And if it does, we just prepare the command. We run, we get the current uh, pointer to the command, and then we run the prepare function against the uh the command right and we pass in the arguments for that command so that's all that does um but yeah the reason i just named it command state instead of command is just because command is actually a built-in keyword in a standard library which i probably want to use later if i actually want to execute like you know actual uh system commands in rust um so yeah, I mean, there's probably a library that like lets you um, just run, you know, straight up bash code, like just run it as a string, but I don't know. Um, but yeah, I just decided to use a pointer. I mean, not a pointer, a lifetime, sorry, a lifetime on this. Um, I'm not against clones. I'm just trying to get better with lifetimes, even though this isn't a performance critical application at all. I mean, 
it's always going to be kind of fast because you know it's just printing and reading input um although it would be cool for the install to command the install command to like use threads and kind of like install everything at once that'd be pretty cool to explore later um but yeah we just you know implement the new implement i cannot speak i i speak like english isn't my first language sometimes so i apologize guys <laughs> Um, but yeah, I implemented this uh, new function, which, you know, just kind of sets up the struct, pretty much self-explanatory, and then prepare um, does all the argument validation. So this is pretty cool thing in Rust, where you can have a pointer to a function. So the command arguments is just a vector of string. It's just, you know, it's easier to use this because you can type one word instead of typing this. Um, and then yeah, this is a pointer which points and takes in some arguments. And the arguments are always required. Um, I guess I could, I don't know if I can make this optimal. Let's actually see. I don't know. Okay, it looks like I can, but then I'd have to like do unnecessary checks and those functions. Don't feel like doing that. But the point is um, this is a pointer <laughs> and that is pretty cool because we can call this function down here so yeah we just check so the reason this is in like this specific file is because every command has different you know parameters that we need to check and conditions so we run those checks right here and then if they're successful we actually call the handler so that's why it's called prepare um i'll probably add some code docs later and uh yeah so i think there's like one more yeah yeah so here's the commands file which literally just has like handle help and it just this is all the actual logic for each command right um and yeah that's pretty much how that works like it's not that complicated um i think the code is pretty clean you know i like it um but yeah i i i i should probably get to sleep soon but i just wanted to kind of make this video to show you guys what i'm working on so far and my next step is to actually make the install command like actually install something and I'm going to see if it's possible to just like, uh, where is it? Just copy and paste like normal bash as a string. Cause that'll be the easiest thing because then I can like just code it, like code it in bash. And then where's my editor? Go back to my editor and I can just do something like, um, you know, let script equal, um, how do you do that thing? How do you do that? There's like, I forget the syntax. But yeah, you could, but, but the idea would just be like, pay something like that and then just actually execute all that code. It's not the safest thing to do because, like, no, you know, syntax highlighting and all that. But to be honest, it's really simple. Like, the thing is, is that. If you know if I if I know Linux, if you know Linux, this is understandable, right? Versus trying to do all this in Rust just seems kind of like a pain as well, you know? Like I'd rather do this in Bash and not get any code highlighting versus like, you know, do it in Rust, but everything be ten times harder. Which is kind of like sometimes like I wish I'd kind of started this in JavaScript because it'd be so like I could move so much faster, just one, like not even having to type anything, but two, like you can just do whatever you want. Like, like Rust doesn't even work unless you code it right, which gives me that safe, gives me that confidence that, you know, my program actually at least doesn't a hundred percent suck, <laughs> but, um, yeah, but I can run, just run help and we get, you know, all the commands we have available and then I can run, just run install Docker. It says installing Docker. And as you guys can see, that is from the argument we had right there. So if I do MBM, it's gonna do that. And that all works pretty good. Um, and I really quick, I just have a just file set up. It's kind of like make, um, I just like this personally and running commands and projects. And this one, this run command, or uh, I guess you call it recipe and just, it just takes like it passes literally just passes all the arguments after the command into whatever you want to use it for um and i just pass it to cargo run so that's kind of how that works it's uh just you know 
a little more convenient to me personally. So, yeah. Boom, let's do that. But yeah, um, that's the video, guys. 15 minutes, wow. A little longer than I thought it was going to be. Um, thank you guys for watching if you did. And I will catch you guys in the next video. And I'll keep you updated. Peace.